So this is a geometry review for the um, Certified Welding Inspector exam. This is in collaboration with Mad Skills, which offers training for that exam. You can check out the description for more information. And so we will just review formulas that you need to know for the CWI exam, not all of geometry. <laughs> and so really we're going to focus on circles and general area. And then there are free practice problems at my website in collaboration with Mad Skills, so you can check out the description because you absolutely need to practice this if you are rusty on this. Okay, so let's start by just reviewing some things about circles. So here's a circle. And so this is the center of the circle. So that's really a point that is, you know, the center. And if I draw a line from the center to the edge of the circle, this is what's known as the radius. Now it's not like you have like one radius, really any line that you draw from the center to the edge can be a radius. So for instance, like this is also, you know, the radius of the circle. So it's not like a fixed, you know, area. And then if I were to draw a line straight through the center to each side of the edge of the circle, this is what's known as the diameter. So, there's a relationship between the radius and the diameters that we should talk about. So the diameter is always two times the radius, which is often abbreviated as 2r. And then the radius is the diameter div divided by 2, or we could write r equals d divided by 2. So let's just review some of the like common abbreviations when it comes to a circle. We use d for diameter, r for radius, and c for circumference. So what's a circumference? So the circumference is like measuring that length around the circle, okay? And so to calculate a circumference, we need pi. And just for funsies, I thought I'd show you the first 50 digits of pi. You know, if you wanted to memorize them for your next party to impress your friends, you're welcome. <laughs> and pi is like one of those numbers. People are like, why do we use pi? It, it's a very amazing number in some ways because it's like this naturally occurring number that pops up in nature. So it's like something that we've discovered that like is is tied to nature. So it, it we didn't make it up. Like we've we've kind of like found that it just has these natural applications. So anyways, circumference formula, right? <laughs> so it's c equals pi d or 2 pi r. So this should make sense in that the diameter is two times the radius. So I could either use the diameter or I could do two times the radius. So it doesn't matter which way you want to use it. And then when we say pi, for our calculations, we're just going to use 3.14. So you can just go ahead and, and estimate that. All right, so um, let's do a few calculations now. So what is the circumference of a circle with a three inch diameter? Okay, so this one's talking about diameter. So I'm going to go ahead and use circumference equals pi times d. So if I enter that into my calculator, I'm going to use 3.14, just go ahead and abbreviate, and then times 3, and so then I'd get 9.42 inches. Okay, so another way I could do this problem is now instead of having a diameter, so what is the circumference of a circle with a 2-inch radius? So in this case, I could flip the problem to the other formula that I just showed you, 2 pi r, and so then I could just plug you know everything in. 2 times 3.14 times that 2 inch radius, and then I would get out 12.56 inches. Okay, so that's one way that I could do this. Alternatively, I could also use the pi d formula, and then I just have to make a conversion with what I know about the radius. So I know that the diameter is 2 times the radius, so that's going to be 2 times 2, so my diameter is 4 if my radius is 2. And so now I can use this 4 and use that in, in my formula. So this will become just 3.14 times 4, and then you get the same answer. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video here. I just have two of these for you to try on your own. Um, so pause here, try these, hit play when you're ready to see the solution. So for A, um, I have the, the radius of a pipe is 4 inches. What is its circumference? So um, I can use that formula again, 2 pi r if I wanted. Or, you know, you could use pi d, and then you would just have to convert this to the diameter, which would be 8, tomato, tomato, whichever way you want to do it. Um, anyways, if I use this formula 2 times 3.14 times 4, I will get 25.12 uh, inches. And then um, this other problem, so if you don't know how to use your calculator with this, give me a moment and I will show you. So first let me just talk you through the calculation. So we're talking about a diameter here, so I can use this pi d formula. So I'm going to have 3.14 times 4.5, and, and so you should have gotten 14.13 inches. So if you aren't familiar with how to use your calculator, I just want to kind of briefly go over like how, how would you do this. So option one 
would be to enter four and a half just as a mixed number. And I have other videos where I've, I've talked about mixed number if you're not sure what I, I'm referring to with that. Okay, so for this, what I would do is I would enter in 3.14 and then times, and then in my calculator, and I'm, I'm assuming that you're using a construction type calculator. So four inches, so that was what we had, four inches the units, and then one, and then the fraction button, and then two. So pause the, the video if you need to just familiarize yourself with these buttons. Um, everybody's calculators can be a little bit different, so you might have to just figure out where these buttons are on yours, but the fraction button usually looks like this, or it might say fraction on it. And so anyways, if you do that, you should get 14.13 um, inches. The second option would be to convert four and a half to a decimal. So what you'd have to do in that case is then just take the fraction, so one half, so that's one divided by two, that equals 0.5. So now instead of having four and a half, I can rewrite four and a half to 4.5. So I just replace that fraction with its decimal equivalent. And then I can do my calculation 3.14 times 4.5 and then I'd, I'd get to the same thing. So whichever way you wanna do it is fine. So now we can pivot to area. So um, here is a rectangle. And so the, the idea with like square footage is actually like you would divide a rectangle into squares of equal size. So pretend these are of equal size. And so then you would like just count the number of squares that you would actually fit into that rectangle. So in this case, I notice I've got three squares this way and five squares this way. So to get to that area then, it would be three times five. So that's gonna be 15 square units. Okay, so the area of a rectangle in general is, is calculated kind of using this, this logic. So it's always gonna be that length times the width. So let's we'll call this the length, the width, or you can call this the length and the width, tomato, tomato. Um, but, but that's the way that you calculate these things. And then we abbreviate that just as L times W. Now, you do need to properly label the units. So a lot of times you'll see like square units or the unit squared or like square inches or square feet or inches squared or feet squared. So just make sure that you're using the, the proper units when you are working with questions like this. Okay, I also wanna talk about the area of a circle. So the area of a circle also uses pi. So A equals pi R squared. So that has to do, of course, with the radius um, and there are two ways you can kind of think of r squared. So r squared means r times r, so it means to multiply twice. So you can use that, at, you, you can like leverage that when you're calculating things. There's another formula for area if you wanna use the diameter. So that would be pi d squared divided by four. These two formulas are equivalent to one another. Um, so you just have to make like a little bit of an adjustment to go from one to the other. That's why we have to divide this one by four. Okay, so like I said, these are equivalent and don't forget your, your units squared or your square units, however you wanna write that out. So let's do a few examples with area now. So what is the area of a football field that is 53 yards wide and 100 yards long? So notice that I've got my width and I've got my length here, it's being spelled out. Okay, so my area is L times W and so we've got 100 yards long, put that in for L and 53 yards wide, so there you go, and multiply those together, you get 5,300 yards squared. Okay, um, let's move on to the next example. What is the area of a circle that is 100 feet in diameter? Okay, so in this case, since we're talking about diameter, I'll go ahead and use my um, pi d squared divided by four. So if you're not sure how to enter this into a calculator, first let's just talk about the calculation and then I'll show you. So, um, okay, remember with pi, we always just abbreviate 3.14. And then I put in the 100s, 100 squared, and I divide this by four. So just try this on your calculator and see if this is what you get. You should get 7,850 feet squared. Okay, so if you're not sure where this is, I just found like a random picture of a, a construction calculator or a contractor's calculator. I've played around with a lot of these different types of calculators. They all kind of work the same. This one's kind of a, a fancy one. If you don't have this one, it's, it's fine. You'll, it'll still be the same directions. Um, but I wanna just point out a couple of buttons that you're looking for. So, okay, looking on kind of the, the side, I, I found that a lot of contractors calculators tend to work like this. So if you look kind of on the side, the, the right side of the calculator, you should see, so this is what you're looking for. See how this says X squared? 
x squared. So if you have that button, look through your calculator and you can see if you have that button. That's that's one way you can do this calculation. And you know, whether or not you plan to ever use this, that that's, you know, just try to find it so that you are, feel more confident with your calculator. Okay, so I have here, I see a little x squared above. So here's like a little trick with how calculators work. You'll notice that if you have kind of a fancier calculator like this, you know, they might have like this orange writing on top of them or like a different colored writing. And then you'll also notice like a button like we have here that is also that color. So what that means is your calculator has a second set of like functions that you can use. And the way that you activate them is you press the button of that color. So it doesn't matter, you know, if these were like a dark blue and then you had like a dark blue button over here, it would still work the same. So it's just kind of like the convention with how calculators work. So I bring this up because I need to square this. And if I wanted to just very quickly and easily square it, this button, this X squared button, um, I'll go back and just show you one more time. This little button that says X squared, that is what's going to do that, okay? All right, so let me show you then if you wanted to use the square button, and, and I really would say like you should try this just so you can get some practice with your calculator. Here are the key commands with this particular calculator. You might have to change this slightly for, for your calculator, so maybe you have a different button, a different colored button, but try to see if you can get to that squared button. So I'm gonna have 3.14 times 100 feet, and then I'm going to go ahead and square it. So to square, I've got you know this, this conversion, I hit the square button, and then after I've done that, then I can divide by four. So try that and you know see if you can get to the same number we were just talking about. Now, if you don't like that, there's an alternative way that we can go about this. So try both ways, you know, see what you prefer. So remember, 100 squared means 100 times 100. So the other way that we could enter this in is 3.14 times 100 times 100. So I just multiply 100 twice and then I divide by four. So that would be the other way to do it. And if you do that, then you should still get to the same answer. So challenge yourself just to use the calculator in all the different ways that it kind of offers the or all the options it offers you just so that you get more familiar with it. Okay, so this was how we got to th this answer. But I thought for fun, <laughs> I'm, I'm a lot of fun at parties, I'm sure you can tell by now. Um, so for fun, I, I thought, what if I didn't wanna use this formula? What if I wanted to go an alternative approach to even how I solved this? So what if I wanted to use radius, okay? So let's start the problem over with the understanding that my diameter is two times the radius or the radius is the diameter divided by two. So what if I wanted to approach this now from the standpoint of the radius? Well, I take the radius and that will be 100 div divided by two. So that will give me 50. And the whole reason I'm, I'm interested in that is I wanna use the other area formula. So the other way we could calculate area of a circle would be pi r squared. And I, I kind of like this formula more just because it's a simpler calculation because all I have to do is 3.14 times 50 squared. So um, that to me is a much quicker thing to enter into my calculator and ultimately I get the same answer. So I have to do a little bit of work to figure out what the radius is, but I do get to the same answer. So I just wanted to show you kind of all your options of approaching a problem like this. And I would encourage you to play around with this, you know, as, as you're working through some of your, your homework and your practice problems. Okay, so now let's pause the video here. I have two examples for you to try. So pause here and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for the, the first problem, I have what is the area of a tensile bar that is half inch wide and a quarter inch thick? So this is just talking about really like a, a rectangular shape. So I can just use that L times W formula. And then I can just plug these in. So one half times one fourth. So um, hopefully you're, you're familiar with where that fraction button is at this point. And so you would either get um, one eighth of an inch squared or 0.125 inches squared, just depending on how your, your calculator might um, give, give you the output. Okay, so for the second one, what is the area of a round tensile bar that is half an inch in diameter? Okay, so in this case, I wanna use this pi d squared divided by four. So I need to take 3.14 times half squared divided by four. 
Okay, so I'll show you the, the calculator things to punch in, but first I just want to state what the answer is. So it's 0.1965 um, inches squared. Okay, so just some calculator notes if you're, if you're trying to enter this in. So a few reminders. So if you wanted to use the X squared button, so you would have 3.14 times, you'd put in the fraction 1 half, and then you would hit whatever you need to get to that X squared, and then you would divide by 4. So you can, you can pause and, and try to find some of those buttons. Now, if you don't want to go that route, if you'd rather just multiply twice, then this is what your calculation would look like. So I have 3.14 times 1 half times 1 half divided by 4. And so either way, you should get to the, the same answer. And okay, so that, that wraps up this review. So there's a bunch of practice problems that I'd highly recommend that you spend some time reviewing. And again, just playing around with your calculator and, and getting used to these calculations. Practice definitely makes perfect. So if you're rusty, take the time to review this. It will be worth it.